Hey, woodworkers of YouTube, what's going on? I'm Mark from Woodworker Source. Great to see you again. So I made a series of decorative boxes for my three girls, and I'm gonna show you how I finished them. Here's what's up. I use Padauk for the body and white oak for the splines and lid. Padauk has this natural orange color. It's really unusual, it's really awesome stuff. So when you've got it freshly planed or cut, it's really vivid orange. But what's not so awesome is that it eventually darkens and loses the orange. Everyone's always asking us, how do you get that color to stay? And the answer isn't very definitive, but it is exposure to light that speeds up that change. I've run a couple dozen tests on different finishes, and this recipe that I'm about to show you does about the best you can hope for. Seal it with two or three coats of de-wax shellac, and then you apply no fewer than three coats of General Finish's high-performance water-based top coat. De-wax shellac, or in this case, a product called Seal Coat, really does a nice job of locking in that natural color. And this water-based finish is crystal clear and contains UV protection, and that will help keep Padauk looking good longer than any other type of finish. So to throw a curveball at you, I also filled the grain with a black grain filler. So this step is really just garnish. It doesn't do anything to preserve the color of Padauk. It just looks really cool on the wood. So you ready? Let's do this. I just made an ordinary rectangular box with an open lid and then drew the curve on the sides and used the table saw just to slice off the majority of the waste. As the sculptor Michelangelo said, I saw the angel in the marble and carved him till I set him free. Same concept. I finessed the shape of the block plane until each side looked right and then I started sanding. So this thick foam pad on the sander contours to the shape and I just sanded with 120 grit and then I vacuumed off the dust. So at this stage it's time for the grain filler. This is water-based material, works a lot like drywall mud and the trick to using this on wood is to keep a spray bottle of water around and give it a squirt as it dries out. So you smear it onto an area of the project, you give it a squirt or two of water to really loosen it up and then you just work it into the grain. Here, I'm just gonna use a blue shop towel to swirl it in. That works great for projects with curves and things. On a flat project, I might just use something like a Bondo scraper or an old credit card or something to scrape it on. And then if it starts drying out, I'll just give it another spray or two of water and then I wipe off the excess, trying to go across the grain and then just move on to the next section. All right, so I know exactly what you're thinking right now. That fool just ruined a beautiful piece of wood, and I know what you mean. It looks like I just bathed this sucker in motor oil, but hang tight, it's gonna look great in just a minute. When it dries, it leaves this gray haze. Depending on the humidity in the air, it could take as little as about 30 minutes or so for the filler to dry well enough to be sanded. You can use a random orbit sander when it dries to remove the bulk, and then you just do the rest by hand. And now you may have to do some touch-up spots here and there with a little more filler, especially on the tight curves where it's really easy to sand it out. But at this point, I do my final prep sanding working through each grit. I go from 150, 180, to 220. And for this job, that's about as fine as I go. Now it's time for that first coat of de-wax shellac or seal coat. Pause real quick. One thing I didn't show you is that I finished the inside of the box prior to assembly. So that's a part that I'm not gonna get into here. But just know that finishing the inside of a box is a lot easier to do prior to assembly than it is after because those corners are real tight and a pain to get into. I like to apply this stuff with a cotton rag balled up, soaked in seal coat, and then wrapped up in another cotton rag. And it makes a really nice pad. Then I also thin it down a little bit with some denatured alcohol so it lays down a really nice light coat. And then there's a little bit of mineral oil mixed in too, and this helps keep my applicator nice and slick because shellac dries pretty fast, and it can drag and make some streaks, and that mineral oil really helps a lot. So I work my way around the project by doing two quick coats in one session.
Then I just let that dry for about an hour. To clean off the mineral oil residue, all it takes is a quick wipe down of naphtha. You should do that because the mineral oil residue rises to the top of the finish, makes it kind of slick and the next layer is not going to stick. So you got to get that off. You use a solvent called naphtha. So before applying the top coat finish, I like to give it a good scuff with a synthetic finishing pad. I'm doing this just to work out the imperfections like streaks, dust nibs, bumps, just working those out. To get the smoothest finish possible, we really need to do this after every coat along the way. I know it's kind of a pain, I know it takes a lot of effort, but you won't regret the result that you get from it. To apply this top coat, you gotta know that it starts to dry pretty quickly. So I use a foam brush to lay down a pass and I try not to brush back and forth willy-nilly. Since it kind of dries fast, it's really possible to create more streaks or more bumps trying to brush them out than you would if you just let them be. But of course, sometimes it is necessary to take a small risk here and there to level out a spot that pulled up as long as it's still wet. You let that dry for at least an hour, then you scuff it smooth, wipe off the dust, and then put on a fresh coat. Then I repeated these steps for a grand total of four coats. For whatever project you're working on, you're really going to make a judgment call somewhere along the way as to how many coats you're going to put on. You're going to touch it, you're going to look at it, does it look nice, does it feel nice, do I feel like it needs another coat, do I want to do another coat, that kind of thing. You just stop when you're happy. You can see a lot of streaks while this is still wet, but once it dries, the finishes love it off pretty well. It's not perfect, but it's pretty well level. Scuffing takes care of the rest. Since scuffing really kills the sheen, I've got to polish the finish to bring back the semi-gloss shine. And just like sanding, I work with those synthetic finishing pads going from medium to a fine to an ultra fine pad. That really smooths out the finish, removes scratches, and almost brings back the sheen to where I want it. But to go all the way, I've got to use a liquid polishing powder. But it's really important not to jump into the polishing right away. You want to wait like seven, maybe 10 days. Let that finish really harden up. The harder it is, the better it'll polish. I actually waited seven days to polish mine, but you can wait longer if you want to or if you have to, if you know life gets in the way and you just can't get to it again. If you wait longer, it's not a problem. So with a blue disposable shop towel, I apply a little bit and then I just swirl it on for like a minute or two. And then I start working with the grain back and forth. And eventually I'll grab a fresh shop towel and give it a nice buff. And I just do this one side at a time. I try not to tackle too much at one time. It just might take two or three applications on each area to bring back the shine to right where you want it, but it's really well worth it. 